There are now reports of a possible chemical attack in Syria, and our own Richard Engel joins us from Cairo with the latest. Good morning. Good morning. Not just a chemical attack. Rebels tell us a series of chemical attacks. This morning, starting around 2 a.m., Syrian rebels tell us that there was uh, chemical weapons attacks on at least 10 different towns and villages to the east and north of Damascus. That this barrage of surface-to-surface -surface missiles fired by the regime, missiles tipped with chemical warheads, the rebels claim, lasted for several hours. They say the death toll is now over 1,000. We've seen videos showing many lifeless bodies, many of them women and children. Uh, witnesses say that some of the symptoms before death included constricted pupils, shortness of death, foaming at the mouth. Syrian, the Syrian government denies that it used any chemical weapons. And this comes at a time when UN weapons inspectors are actually in Damascus looking into the fact if uh, chemical weapons have actually been used. The weapons inspectors are staying in hotels that are just a few miles away from where these alleged incidents took place. Richard Engel, uh, thank you for that. Uh, my it's, yeah, this is it's an it, unbelievable story. It, it, what, Richard, okay. I mean, with Egypt, I, I mean, is this the best? I mean, I hate to say it, but Syria thinks they've got cover to, to, to try this now with the world focused on Egypt? Um, it's hard to know if there was any direct timing between what's been happening uh, in Egypt and what's been happening in Syria. While we've been focused on events in Egypt for the last two weeks or so, the war in Syria has been developing and continuing on its own pace. But they are interconnected in a, in a global sense. If you look at the pendulum of the Arab swing, how it's been moving over the last three years, for a while there was momentum with the opposition, the rebels on the streets, the protesters, the Islamic movements. Now the pendulum seems to have shifted back the other way. The military taking over here again in Egypt, a generally positive reaction to that from the Egyptian people, Saudi Arabia embracing it, right. Kuwait, the UAE, a lot of governments saying that they think having the militaries come back in power is a good thing. Right. That right. certainly helps the Bashar al-Assad regime hurts the rebels. Right. Right. I don't know if that geopolitical shift, however, had anything to do with the alleged right. atrocity think, that took place if, you in think these about uh, if, Damascus if, suburbs. If Egypt wasn't, if the, the generals in Egypt weren't pilloried by, by uh, you know, the street, then it, it almost emboldened, it would seem to, to embolden other governments to, to, to put down demonstrations maybe the same way and not worry so much about a backlash. Uh, certainly Bashar al-Assad likes the fact that the uh, military has taken over uh, here in Egypt and is turning the tide against the Muslim Brotherhood and other Islamic groups yeah. in this country. So does Jordan, so does a, a lot of countries. Uh, it, it bodes very poorly for the rebels in Syria long term. It makes, uh, makes people feel that maybe a strong hand is the right kind of, uh, yeah. of government in, when you are looking at uh, the alternative, which has been in, the last in, three in, years in, of chaos. Just Syria, ask. however, is a really extreme case where yeah. you have uh, now alleged chemical weapons use. Wow. Yeah. Uh, I don't think the people in the Arab world, even though if they even if they support the, a return to a strong government in Egypt, will accept what happened. But, there. And now, what's the Obama administration? They're, they're already getting you know people are criticizing you know the, the what we're doing with Egypt. The, the red line has now obviously been crossed. That was supposedly drawn in the sand. It's a huge, another additional problem for for how to handle it for for uh, Hegel and the rest, right? It, it certainly is. Uh, President Obama had previously said that the use of chemical weapons was a red line. This is not the first time uh, chemical weapons have been used or allegedly been used in Syria. This would be a dramatic increase in scale, however. Yeah. And if you remember, the White House promised to start sending lethal aid to the rebels in Syria after U.S. intelligence had proof that small amounts of chemical weapons had been used. That was after small amounts. Right. What about today, if these reports, 10 different towns and villages, at least 1,000 plus dead, many of them women and children. If that, if, if crossing the red line already happened, today it sounds like Syria and the Bashar regime just jumped right over that red line, which, which is going to put the Obama administration in a difficult position. How do you take action against Bashar al-Assad and then come out and say, well, we're still with the Syrian government. Okay. I think you may have a, you're going to have a policy of, uh, of some, uh, well, inconsistencies here. Okay.